If I have to describe this lens just with one word, it will probably be cinematic. I know it's a cliche, but uh, this is the most cinematic lens that I own. And it has not to do with the amount of uh, aperture blades, because this lens has a crazy amount of aperture blades that can provide a, an amazing uh, circular bokeh at every f-stops, but uh, it's more about the rendering of the images. It's something that I never saw before. I don't know if it's a combination of modern glass with old optical design, but uh, the images I'm getting from this lens are pretty much uh, astonishing. Ciao guys and welcome back, it's your friend Luca and in today's video we're gonna talk about the new Meyer Optic Gorlix 75mm f1.9. The new Primum Plan 75mm f1.9 is a lens for full frame cameras that can capture beautiful photos with a very particular and unique look. This lens is not only about soap bubble bokeh, there is much more to talk about it. I've been using this lens for a month with my full frame mirrorless cameras and I'm really loving the images I'm getting from this uh, fantastic portrait lens. This new version of the Primoplan 75mm f1.9 has been uh, revisited for modern digital cameras applications. So this lens will produce clear colors, great contrast and sharpness while keeping the dreamy bokeh and the soft haze in the background, like we are used to see in the first and old version of this lens. This lens is available both for Canon and Nikon DSLR cameras, but also for mirrorless cameras. If you have many cameras with different lens mounts, maybe you should consider to get the DSLR version of the lens and buy different adapters. But if you only have one mirrorless camera system, I suggest you to get the native version of the lens because the lens is perfectly calibrated for the infinity focus. Another great characteristic that I love about this lens is the size and weight. As you can see on my Lumix S1, it is extremely small and lightweight. It balances perfectly on the camera, but also on the S5 that I'm using right now, so I cannot show you how it looks on the S5, but the combination of the Primo plan with the Lumix S5 is even better than this because it's way more portable and compact. It's more portable and lightweight. The lens doesn't have CPU contacts, so you can't have EXIF information in your photos and you can't control the iris blades from the camera. The lens is not weather sealed, but after using it every day for a month, I don't see any dust particles between the glass elements. The whole lens is very well made and it feels like a premium product. It's made in Germany from the raw glass to the finished lens and it's assembled by hand. The focus ring is very smooth and well damped. It's a really pleasure to acquire the focus with this lens. One of the best mechanical characteristics of this lens are the amount of aperture blades. This lens has 15 aperture blades that will always provide a nice and rounded bokeh. The aperture ring has a little bit of extra resistance while rotating it compared to the focus ring and there aren't hard stop between each f-stop. So the lens is pretty much the clicked. The lens can cover a 60mm circle so you can use it with a medium format camera and the front filter diameter is 52mm. The lens is coming with a beautiful case and you can also find the screw-in type lens hood made out of metal and the front cap of the lens. Talking about the image quality, you have to understand that this is a lens with a double character. Wide open at f1.9 you will have low contrast, some glow and some chromatic aberrations, but you will capture a good amount of sharpness. And thanks to the combination of this characteristic, you will be able to capture really amazing portraits with really smooth skin. But when you stop down the lens to f2.8, the lens will lose this strong character and it will start to behave like a normal portrait lens, with high contrast, great colors and sharpness. Talking about the corners sharpness, this lens doesn't really produce sharp corners, but considering that it is a portrait lens, I wouldn't care 
much about it but in case you plan to use this lens also for some landscape photography maybe you should consider to frame your shot a little bit wider so you will be able to crop those unsharp corners in post the transition from the focus to the defocus areas are very progressive and smooth at all the f-stops the flares produced by this lens are very beautiful with that purple color and the level of contrast is well maintained now talking about this lens as a tagging lens for anamorphic setups i freaking love it when i pair this lens with my isco ultra star that is a two times anamorphic scope I get an equivalent field of view of a 35mm on full frame with a depth of a 75mm lens. So I get really sick images and videos with this combination. With this combination I also get more flares than normal, the ISCO is really flare resistant and the colors of them are really beautiful. Without a variable diopter I have a small amount of vignetting and distortion in the corners but if you use an aspect ratio of 239.1 for your videos these problems will disappear. This is a lens that I can highly recommend if you are a portrait, street or abstract photographer but also if you are a filmmaker because the lens provides really cinematic footage. It is the clicked and the focus stroke is around 210 degrees. In case you need something wider than this 75mm, you can also consider to add the new Primoplan 58mm f1.9 or other new lenses made by Meyer Optic in your kit. I'll leave the link in the description where you can check what they're offering. As you probably know, I tried many, many lenses and many portrait lenses and I can easily say that this is probably one of the best portrait lens that I have in my kit. Mostly because this lens is able to capture images in a very cinematic way but i'm not the only one having this opinion about this beautiful lens because consulting with many director of photography we all conclude that this is probably one of the most cinematic lens you can buy for not so high price and keep talking about the rendering of the images i have to say that i love the combination of modern glass with vintage optical design that has been revisited for digital sensors because the combination produce really unique and amazing images if you would like to see more video reviews of Meyer Optic Gorlitz lenses write down in the comment below what lens would you like to see so I will do my best to make this future video review possible anyway if you have any question about this lens please write it down in the comment area below so everyone can read my answer about that specific question so try to don't send me private messages because those private messages are gonna be hidden to the audience so it's better to share knowledge with everyone and maybe your opinions as well because your opinion counts uh, quite a lot so this is it for today guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one ciao